before this video starts, I would just want to apologise for not uploading on Friday. What happened was that I did make a video on Friday. It took four hours to edit. I finally finished the video at about six, and then I accidentally deleted the video. And then, like, during after that, I couldn't find the time to make an, a video to make up for that. So I apologise for not uploading on Friday or after that. So without further ado, let's begin the video. Hi guys, Law Lord here. Today I am going to make a video about the Greybeards. The Greybeards are a very important faction within the main quest line of Skyrim. I decided to make a law video on them because that was the part where I was up to on the main quest line anyway, so I thought I might as well do it now. First, let's start with the location of their main place, Rai Hrothgar. Rai Hrothgar is on the throat of the world, which is the name of the mountain, and it is and to get up there you have to walk across the seven thousand steps. There's not much to say about the 7,000 steps except except that like when you is that you come from Iverstead that's where the bottom of the mountain is that's where you start the thing on the way you meet a few pilgrims fight of wolves and a troll and a fun fact about the 7,000 steps is that there's not actually 7,000 there's I don't know how many there are but there's actually less than 7,000 steps on on within the 7,000 steps. So, we can already take a... Uh, we already know that we can sue the Greybeards for false advertising. No, just kidding. Okay, let's go inside their monastery and speak with the Greybeards. Dragonborn appears at this moment in the turning of the age. I am answering your summons. We will see if you truly have the gift. Show us, Dragonborn. Let us taste of your voice. Boost! Strike us with the power of your... I am Master Angir. I speak for the Greybeards. Now, tell me, Dragonborn, why have you come here? I mean to learn what it means to be Dragonborn. Well, we are here to guide you in that pursuit. Just as the Greybeards have sought to guide those of the Dragonblood that came before you. You mean I wasn't the only one? However, actually, I already know this because there's been Talos and his descendants as well as Dragonborns before him. So, you mean I'm not the only one? <laughs> you are not the first. There have been many of the dragon blood since Akatosh first bestowed that gift upon mortal kind. Whether you are the only dragonborn of this age, that is not ours to know. You are the only one that has been revealed thus far. That is all I can say. I am ready to I'm learn. Shown that you are dragonborn. You have an inborn gift. But, do you have the discipline and temperament to follow the path laid out for you? Yeah, that remains to be seen. Without training, you have already taken the first steps towards projecting your voice into a thune, a shout. Now let us see if you are willing and able to learn. When you shout, you speak in the language of dragons, 
Thus, your dragon blood gives you an inborn ability to learn words of power. All shouts are made up of three words of power. As you master each word, your shout will become progressively stronger. Master Einarth will now teach you Roll, the second word in unrelenting force. Roll means balance in the dragon tongue. Combine it with Fus, force, to focus your thumb more sharply. Roll. So we are learning the second word of unrelenting force, Ro, which But learning a word of power is only the first step. You must unlock its meaning through constant practice in order to use it in a shout. Well, that is how the rest of us learn shouts. As Dragonborn, you can absorb a slain dragon's life force and knowledge directly. As part of your initiation, Master Einart will allow you to tap into his understanding of Rome. So now I need to demonstrate your unrelenting force shout to strike the targets as they appear. Sure. So now I'm demonstrating my unrelenting force. Force? No! Well done. Again. You learn quickly. Once more. Impressive. Your thumb is precise. You show great promise, Dragonborn. We will perform your next trial in the courtyard. Follow Master Bori. By the way, remember when you mentioned that I am not the first Dragonborn? However, they do not know if there's another one currently. Well, I will not say because of spoilers. However, when we cover the DLCs, we will learn of another Dragonborn who is who misuses the way of the voice. But that is all I will say because of spoilers. But for now, let us see what more we can learn from the Greybeards. I'm going to set Welrund as my favourite because it is a shout that I tend to use a lot. Ah, 
Master Rory. X. Wolf. Now it's your turn. Stand next to me. Master Bori will open the gate. Use your whirlwind sprint to pass through before it closes. Your quick mastery of a new thume is uh, astonishing. I'd heard the stories of the abilities of Dragon. It stopped recording. The clip stopped recording. So I had to re-record it. So that's probably... If you see a cut, that's why. Okay. Thank you. What's next? You are now ready for your last trial. Retrieve the horn of Jürgen Windcaller, our founder from his tomb in the ancient fane of Ostengraf. So, Remain true to the way I of will Earth. continue recording when I get there. Five, our leader, Parthenax, lives alone on the peak of the throat of the world. When your voice can open the path, you will know you are ready to speak to him. As I said, you will know you are ready when your voice can open the path to him. We study the way of the voice according to the teachings of our founder, Jürgen Winkor. Very few are permitted to study with us here at High Hrothgar. But in your case, Dragonborn, it is a privilege to guide you towards mastery of your voice. Their voices are too powerful for anyone not trained in the way to withstand. Even a whisper could kill you. The voice was a gift of the goddess Tinnerith at the dawn of time. She gave mortals the ability to speak as dragons do. Although this gift has often been misused, the only true use of the voice is for the worship and glory of the gods. True mastery of the voice can only be achieved when your inner spirit is in harmony with your outward actions. In the contemplation of the sky, Kinnereth's domain and the practice of the voice, we strive to achieve this balance. The Dragonborn is an exception to all the rules. The Dragon Blood itself is a gift of the gods. If we accept one gift, how can we deny the other? As Dragonborn, you have received the ability to shout directly from Akatosh. We therefore seek to guide you on the proper use of your gift, which transcends the restrictions which bind other mortals. He was a great war leader of the ancient Nords, a master of the voice or tongue. After the disaster at Red Mountain, where the Nord army was annihilated, he spent many years pondering the meaning of that terrible defeat. He finally came to realize that the gods had punished the Nords for their arrogant and blasphemous misuse of the voice. He was the first to understand that the voice should be used solely for the glory and worship of the gods, not the glory of men. Jürgen Windcaller's mastery of the voice eventually overcame all opposition and the way of the voice was born.
when guide you. No doubt, the appearance of a dragonborn at this time is not an accident. Your destiny is surely bound up with the return of the dragons. You should focus on honing your voice, and soon your path will be made clear. Good. Then you will be ready for whatever lies ahead. We study. Very few are permitted. But in your case, Dragonborn, it is a privilege to guide you to this master of your lives. So I figured it out. Morfol is the hold capital of Yalmarch. Yes, finally. Within my vast knowledge of memorized lore, it has finally came back to me the name of the hold in which Morfol is the capital of. I certainly did not just Google it because I would not have to. I have. I am full of memorized lore within my brain. I ha would have no reason to go on the fandom Wikipedia to see the name of Morfol's hold. Anyway, we are outside Ustan Graf. We shall now go inside. The, the bandit died just when the necromancer died because that this is also kind of a mini law part that I want to talk about in this video I mean we're about to see what I'm talking about like as soon as we get in I've played Skyrim over like at least five times now, not including this game. So we have some dead bandits. Let's hide behind this rock to do a bit of eavesdropping. to grab a pick and help them out. I prefer not to sully myself with manual labor. There goes another one. Bah, weak-willed rabble. Even dead, they're almost useless.
they seem less intelligent each time you raise them, if that's even possible. As long as they can swing a pickaxe where I tell them, they're as smart as we need them to be. You hear that? The others must have found something. We'd better go see. These can tend to themselves for a few minutes. So, see how that bandit just died randomly? So it seems that this used to be a bandit hideout until the necromancers came. They took over the, um, what is it called again? They took over the burial. They killed all the bandits and are now using them as undead thralls. But why are they here? What are they looking for? Well, we know what we're looking for. So let's go in deeper. Now we're seeing dead necromancers and dead Frogger. No, 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 no. Lydia, I wanted to wait until the fight was done. But by the looks of it, it seems it, all, it pretty much already was. So, so, it seems that the necromancers were able to deal with the bandits, but they seem to have, have trouble dealing with the Draugr. I wonder if this is as far as the necromancers got, or if some of them got further. Let's find out. Let's have a look in this room. Here's a gamer tip. Tick. Here's a gamer tip. Whenever a game tells you to go one way, before you go said way, you should always check the opposite way, because you will be able to find something cool, like this, like that sword and a bunch of gold. I mean, it's not best loot, however, it is something. I need to drop this because I'm overcumbered. Ah, uh, so so far it seems that. This is that before where we saw the necromancers, that was as far as they got. And the rest is full with undead Raga and skeletons. find out why the necromancers have taken over the first part of the burial. We don't learn that. However, I'm just guessing that merely just as a hideout for their experiments and stuff. And that can be said about the bandits. They just wanted to use the burial as a hideout. However, we are looking for something, an artifact, about two eras old. I was gonna say centuries, however, it's a lot, it was a lot longer ago than two centuries. This part always confused me, trying to find the door in this room. And, oh, is this it down here? Okay, me trying to look for the door here. I always get stuck when trying to find the door of this room. 
and so I will cut until I find the door to continue from this room and then I will and once I find it I will continue playing playing the video okay change your plan um since this video is already quite long I'm going to end here and I will make a part two sometime so I hope you enjoyed leave a like and subscribe sorry for not uploading on Friday and I hope you have a nice Christmas holiday see ya